Why, hello everyone, welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Story Mode and the conclusion of the Shadows of Mach Raid series. It's time we wrapped up this little side story so we can get back to the main one. But we do have one more day, one more raid, and several challenging boss fights ahead, which I will try to not die in. But first story. Hello. Stasia has been searching for you at Kate Sitz. Sorry, said it wrong. Ketchi's behest. Derman, Ketchi just sent me out to find you. You have a proper knack for showing up at just the right time, you know that? I do know that. Anyway, Ketchi cracked open that tome, what we got from Rod uh, Rodlia, and has been studying all the Nullstone secrets. He thinks he may be onto something important, not just concerning Diabolos and the Shadow Queen, but also the cat himself. Come on back to the parrot, we can all hear what he has to say together. Sounds great. Any excuse to go hang out? in the Sky House. I love it. Seriously, we should get to come back here more often. This place is great. I am somewhat relieved that the last wing of the raid went as smoothly as it did, because it has some of the scarier mechanics in it. Today's also kind of scary, but manageable. And it's pretty clear at this point that my very good party of geese will carry me through, regardless. That's not what I... No. No. The Lalafell, not the blue light. Ketchi has had the darkest look on his face? Hmm. Thanks for coming. Now let's ask Ketchi what this is all about. All right, I'm doing, I'm doing. Hello, cat. As I suspected, this tome was penned by a Maki sorcerer of superior standing. As well as detailing the methods by which the full power of the Nullstone might be unleashed, its pages also contain a number of revelations concerning my master, High Void Mage Cesare. If these histories are to be trusted, then it seems that Cesare herself was responsible for summoning Diablos. But I thought you said your master was supposed to start in the war effort, or opposed to support in the war effort. Why would she be the one to call out that bat-winged monster? Cesare only agreed to the ritual as a means of bringing the conflict to an early resolution. From what I can glean from these passages, Diablos was intended as a bluff. A threat that was never meant to be exercised. But those arrogant imbeciles ignored my master's carefully laid restrictions and elected to unleash the fiend upon Amdapur. It was when Cesare moved to protest this act that she was branded a traitor and imprisoned. Once they had contained the opposition, the Void Mages studied all manner of otherworldly arts at the taloned feet of their new pet. The most dangerous of which was the right for summoning Skaha, and the method for chaining her power. And boy, I hope I said that right. Something to that effect. Gaelic. Yet even after all they had perpetrated, these ambitious fools had the gall to come crawling to Cesare when the coming of the Great Floods was predicted. They begged her to take control of the Void Ark for the salvation of the Maki people. As you saw for yourself, however, the energies of the Shadow Queen broke loose and turned the vessel into a derelict nest of void scent. It seems obvious now that the arts taught by Diablos were deliberately flawed. The only saving grace in all this madness was when that damnable fiend was sealed away by the white mages of Amdapur. I shudder to think what would have happened had they been reunited with it or had he been reunited with his queen. So now, 1,500 years later, Diablos is looking to finish what he started? I thought the bat-faced bastard was just some opportunistic underling, but turns out he's the main villain behind this whole mess. Were Cesare alive today, she would accept responsibility for unleashing Diablos upon the world. As the High Void Mage is familiar, it is my duty to act in her stead. I have deciphered the secrets of the Nullstone, and with its undiluted power shall I erase Diablos from existence. Huh. I like your spirit, puss, but try not to rush in too quickly, huh? Getting yourself killed won't do us or your master any good. Or 
wait, 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 wait. No one's rushing in anywhere just yet. Or have you forgotten that we're still in the middle of scouting out the fiend's lair? We've got the compass to go by, aye, but who knows what kind of place it'll lead us to, or how many demons will be lying in wait when we get there. We fly in with our eyes open, or we risk getting slaughtered just like the talons. Oh yes, speaking of which, the tome made mention of a potential location for... Um... We should look into this, yes? Leofert! Behind? He's behind you! Ah! Curse you, fiend! Dermot, shoot him with a gun! At last. At long last. Uh, this is far from over, demon. We'll not allow an abomination like the Shadow Queen to rule this world. Then thou knowest not of ruling. It is might which decideth dominion. But believe what thou mayest, frail, frail creature. You are playthings. Your screams of denial shall amuse me as I send this rock and all upon it to shatter upon the ground below. Boy, would that I could, like, conjure a Kratos voice when I wanted to. For the bigger demony things. Is that Rodlia? Where's she been hiding that ship? It's pretty good. Good ship. I would not tire my arm with the swatting of so many flies. The null stone's mine, and there's yet much to be done. Oh, very good. Crisis averted. Well, well. Ain't I a lucky sod? Two demons in one day. Found some new dogs to lick your boots, Radlea. <laughs> Is that any way to welcome me back to life? You needed allies, and you persuaded our reluctant fellows to join in common purpose. But hang on. You needed allies, and persuading our reluctant fellows to join in common purpose is a feat only a woman of my charming beauty could accomplish. And besides, you look too injured to be of much use to anyone. You'd best take to your bed, old man. Let me and your champion here take care of the void scent. Once you can tuck tail and run again at the first sign of trouble. You'd not even be standing there if it weren't for me, even with my arm busted up, and I'm still twice the pirate you are. Nay, I think you should stay behind this time, Leoford. We must pursue Diablos without you. Time is of the essence, and we cannot afford to wait for you to heal. 
We must take advantage of Captain Radlia's reinforcements and proceed with all haste. Did the demon drop you on your head, Furbo? Without me there to run things, you'll just end up getting in Derman's way. And no one's making haste anywhere till we know what we're flying into. Again, Captain Radlia may hold the answer to that dilemma. I suspect that the island where she uncovered the Maki Tome is the very location where Diablos has chosen to lair. This floating marvel I speak of is not a natural occurrence. It was constructed as a haven for refugees of the floods. The tome makes very clear reference to the island's purpose, and describes in detail the void sense sorcery employed in its creation. As the Void Ark never arrived at its destination, however, the island remained uninhabited. I can imagine no more suitable hideaway for our scheming fiend. Even better, Diabolus will not expect us to suddenly arrive on his secluded doorstep. The Talon fleet will carve us a path through the lesser fiends, and we shall strike swiftly into the heart of the confusion to seize the Nullstone. Once the relic is secured, I will use its power to obliterate our devilish foe. As a Sky Pirate, surely you understand how such an assault relies on speed and surprise. We cannot have a wounded companion slow us down, and potentially doom the entire Enterprise. So you think you're in charge now, do you, puss? Poor broken Leoford's just some dead weight you need to cut away. You know what? I've had a belly full of your mule in any case. Go on. Fly off without me. See how far you get with your thrice-damned Enterprise. Captain Radlia, compare the direction indicated by the Acto Compass with your navigational records, if you please. I think we'll find the coordinates coincide with the island in question. Certainly. And feel free to board our flagship when you're set to depart. My darling's large enough to accommodate your adventurer and his fellows with room to spare. We've got us a plan, then. And in we're going to go to Dunska, I want to say. Gaelic, you understand. Dunska, I think, is the closest I'm ever going to get. Don't you worry, I'll keep an eye on the captain while everyone's off on this grand adventure. Without him. Hmm. Are you certain you don't need me to go with you? <laughs> Sorry I'm leaving you here with him. This adventure's all yours, Derman. I'll be cheering you from my sickbed like a good little pirate. I promise. Good. Be good. This is the way it must be. Considering our need for haste and the extent of Leoford's injuries, my conclusion was merely logical. Captain Redbill's primary concern should be securing the freedom of the skies, not limping into almost certain death at the hands of the Void Scent, no matter how much he chafes at being excluded from the voyage. You speak truth. Catchy was only talking common sense. The captain took it hard, but I think he knows it, too. We're doing the right thing leaving him behind, ain't we? Yes. Yes, we are. I acquired our splendid flagship after the Ishgardians saw fit to abandon her. I hear she was an attempt to match the airborne agility of their dragon enemies, but the vessel never did live up to expectations. When she passed to me, we replaced all of their improvements with structural reinforcements and made ourselves a flying fortress. Our stately lass will not soon be knocked from the sky. Lovely. I'm counting on that, actually. Okay, let's join our third group and get ready for battle. Okay, and the crew is assembled. Let's get ourselves in there. I'm excited for Dunska, which, again, doing my best. The ancient tome recovered by Captain Radlia of the Talons tells of a floating refuge, an island created by Maki sorcerers to provide safe haven from calamitous floodwaters. With the disaster that befell the Void Ark, however, the island's intended residents never arrived. Ketchi is convinced that Diabolus has instead claimed this refuge as his own, transforming what was to be a bastion of hope into a void-sent nest of shadowy nightmare. And it is into this fiendish lair that you must delve. The Lady Radlia stands ready to bear you across the skies. Assault the island, reclaim the Nullstone, and cast your demonic foes into oblivion. You named the ship after yourself, come on. Gosh. Let's go, everyone! And welcome to Dunska, or whatever it's called. I'd love to actually know, I'm just... hedging my bets that I'm saying something wrong. More Final Fantasy references inbound, by the way! And some rather challenging fights. I'm predicting if I die, it's most likely going to be on the first, or the last. 
There's just a lot of good options for dying. Insolent mortals, one does not come uninvited to the Shadow Queen's castle. Hey, Final Fantasy VI fans. You ready for a fun treat? It's Death Gaze. Get hype, everyone. And psyched. We're going in for a fight. In which it's very easy to fall off. And die. Hence why I expect odds of death for me are increased. That's gonna pull you in and try to kill you. Get out of the red ring. Nope. Keep running. Whew. Okay. If you're in that red ring when it goes off, you will die. So don't be in the red ring. Then there's these green things, which are going to be tornadoes, which are just gonna get dropped everywhere. So that's not ideal. And they will knock you around, so you don't want to be in any of those puddles. Lots of things to avoid. Oh, and this thing will knock you away. So I'm positioning myself in a place where it will knock me against the wall and not the edge. Reaping wings, heed my command. Strip the souls from their worthless shells. Oh dear, okay. Stand back. We need to stand back from these to avoid damage without running off the edge, but we need to stand in front of them because we're about to get pushed by wind. Which is why you want to be in front of the ice, so you get stopped. We got a few deaths, but that's okay. We are hanging in there. Do that damage. Don't die. Etc. What's happening? Oh, jeez. Okay, so now these, oh no. Now these platforms, or these little parts of the floor, are gonna start happening. More and more. And when they're flashing like that, they're about to go off and kill anybody standing in them. So don't be standing in those. It's not so bad right now, there's just two of them, but the longer the fight goes on, the more of the floor gets covered. And that's not good, is it? No, it isn't. Oop. More tornadoes and also sprites. Adds. Oh boy, ice, ice, ice. So much to pay attention to. And now that's about to go off on the floor. We're okay. Oop, run away from that. Continue running away from that. Oof, okay. There's so many scary things going on. More wind. And more tiles of floor. Awesome. And now that. Oh, good, 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 good. So we need to get to near the edge, but still in front of ice. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna get off this part of the floor now, just in case. We've almost got the darn thing. And Death Gaze is down! Forgive me, my queen. This wretch wraith has failed you. Beautifully done. That's one scary boss away. There it is up ahead, the island from the tome. Let's find somewhere to dock this behemoth. And here we are. It is lovely. These buildings were meant to house the refugees of Muck. A promised land, forgotten by time. What's this? Visitors to our fair abode. Pray allow me to be the first to welcome you. I believe that would be Ferdiad. The Voidsent have claimed this place, just as I suspected. 
It has become a nest of shadows and despair. It's got some nice kind of like Alexandria adjacent vibes, right? Like it's not Alexandria from Nine, but... A little bit of a similar aesthetic feel, which I appreciate. Any scrap of Final Fantasy IX I can get in here, I will take. There should be more, frankly. And just lovely music as well. Oop, don't look at that. Oof, didn't even see there was another one happening over there. Glad I didn't turn to face away from this one, facing directly at that one. That would have, um, not been ideal. Take that thing out. I really don't want it doing anything more. And there we go. Next boss shouldn't be too far. There we are. Here we go, boss number two. Not as scary as the others, but that's mostly just for lack of, like, stuff you can fall off of. It's gorgeous though, right? I really love the look of this particular raid. It's like somewhere between... It's like Final Fantasy IX vibes mixed with Kingdom Hearts vibes. Like, there's a Hollow Bastion energy to all this up here. I approve. And here we go! Oh, how I love entertaining unexpected guests. And do I spy some familiar faces in the crowd? That you do. All right. So what do those things do? I've memorized so many mechanics. All right, so that's just an AoE that's... Ah, oh, that spawns, right, a little spinning scythe that we don't want to be anywhere near. Here's the main interesting mechanic. Uh, orbs get spawned, and these Atomos get spawned. The thing that fires out, like, the orb, or whatever the AoE thing is, is going to get sucked into one of the Atomos, and spit out of the similarly colored one. So, that will tell you what the position is of the thing which is about to kick off a big AoE. The shape of the thing will tell you what kind of AoE it is. A blue orb, like the one we just saw, will be a little, like, danger puddle on the ground in a circular shape. But ones that are like little rings like this will do a donut shape, so you want to stand near where they're going to spit out. Which would be in front of... So blue, to blue, so this one right here. Yes? Or is it like, oh, it's right around the uh, Atomos. I thought I was going to kick out here. That's fine, whatever. You get the gist. Dance with me. Prance with me. Choose your stage. A fiery demise or a watery grave. So now we've been hit with a thing that is making us weak to water. So we want to change all of these pu cuddle colored puddles here to the correct element. Yeah. There we go. If these are all kicking out fire, that's okay. We're not as weak to fire. We're weaker to water. But that status effect could very easily have been a... Where am I hiding here? Okay, we're fine. <laughs> Lots to keep track of and remember. I'm seeing... Oof. Yeah, I was seeing a, uh, don't look at this danger puddle over there. All right. I think that inner ring is about to spit out. Yep, more ads. That's not, that's not okay. Neither is this. Move. Whew. I'm okay. Sorry, I'm not explaining the mechanics quite as perfectly in this one. Pay attention and you'll miss the big reveal.
Where's the laughter? The thunderous applause? There's simply no pleasing you. I'm enjoying your jester vibes. Oop. Okay, we got blue ones going into a blue and a yellow. So blue and a yellow are both gonna get blue ones. Let's um get away from those. There we go. Success. That's a fun gimmick. I, I enjoy that particular evasion challenge. Oop. We want those carried away. It's about to drop those spinny scythes. Which is going to hurt. Yep. That's also not good. Oh, that's right. And these continue to grow. It's not a good place to be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was a little close. We're fine, though. So what's this a move about to happen? Okay, that would be- ah, yes, this again, but also now there's a stack marker. But the boss is near dead. Maybe we can burn it down before the fire happens. Oops. Maybe. I'm gonna turn this into water just in case. No, we're good, okay. Alas, we came to the end of my show. There shall be no encore. More of a goofball than I read from that character originally. I like them. Now look at this. I like this. Something comes, but it is no void scent. Be ready for anything. Yeah, I love the look of this place. What's going on with the inside of these roses? Are they like clocks or something? No, they're just watching us. Ooh, that's cool. They're kind of tracking us a bit. And now that we've walked through, things look a bit different as well out here. Now this is just a mini-boss, Proto Ultima here. Fights somewhat similarly to Ultima Weapon, back from A Realm Reborn. Uh, with another one or two scary moves thrown in, but still not the scariest. We should be fine. Ultima Systems Online. Performing Systems Check. Systems Check Complete. Initializing Armageddon Sequence. Let's just burn the thing down, shall we? Nope. Reactor capacity exceeded. Gravitational collapse imminent. Oop, stag marker on that. And then run out, because that's a proximity thing that'll hurt, but not into the yellow. Just up to the edge. There we go. And then into a corner to hide from that proximity as well. And that's the new scary... Oh, nope, then also this. <laughs> and that's the new scary thing. Ooh. Final Fantasy 13 enemies just for fun. Reactor cells charged. Supernova ready. And now, I think... We need to start working to burn this enemy down before it can hurt us too bad. Ouchies. Ethereomagnetic induction beacon active. Commencing ether transfer. Reactor cells hypercharging. I don't know what these are doing, but let's kill them. It's a good usual default rule for ads. If you can't remember what exactly to do, just assume killing them is probably the best. That supernova is probably going to hurt real bad. Let's um try to kill it before it can do that. Thirty seconds to supernova, and it is defeated. That would have been a lot scarier back in the day when we weren't geared so high. But all right. Now to head toward a proper boss. Look at all this, is great. By the twitching of my whiskers, there's a fell magic ahead. Only the queen herself could radiate malice of this magnitude. I 
I love the look of this one. The arena especially. And here we are. Say hello to Skaha. Or something similar. By all means, comments if there's a better pronunciation, and I'm sure there is. Feel free to detail in the comments below. Yeah, look at all this. I love it. I really hope someday a Kingdom Hearts raid happens in Final Fantasy XIV. Both for the fun of just the raid itself, and the little story, and all that nonsense. Also just for the fashion that it will add to the game. Think about it. Okay, and I think we're about ready. Preparation's been done. Welcome, mortals, to my citadel of shadows. Have you come to deepen the gloom with an offering of souls? I mean, I hope not. Various moves to look out for in this fight as well. Creeping shade and silhouette, gather unto me. Okay, these ribbon wings are one mechanic to be watched out for. You want to stand kind of behind them when they stretch out like this, because... Big AoE right there. Oop. And lots of circle AoEs like that, of course. Oh, when the floor goes wibbly, don't move or do anything. Just stand still. Until it stops. And... It's gotta stop eventually. Ow. Okay, that hurt. To me, my protege, smother these intruders with uh, the arts that I've taught thee. And now... Konla is here. Uh-oh. Tank went down. Not the most ideal, but I'm sure they'll be back up in a moment. Oop. Look out for all that. Danger puddles abound. Oop. Wings again. Yep, move over this way, move over this way. Um, that's probably not something to stand in. And that marker is probably also a scary thing. Oh, yeah. Big painful AoE drops in behind that marked player. It's very large. Oh, it's about to be a big column AoE right in front of the boss. So much to watch out for. The ribbons are a nice tell, at least, for some of these ribbon-based moves. Oop. Okay. Ads need to die. See, so the whole environment is also changing with all these phases. They, they really go above and beyond. With the visual spectacle. Ah! These are meteors that we need to stand in the path of. Because if we're standing under them, they do a lot less damage to everyone. And now, we've got another ad to take out. So much to do. Kill the Jester. All the Jesters. All of them. There we go. Accept my touch and bask in tenebrous brilliance. Youch. We're wearing her down. And we've seen most of her moves at this point. Okay. We're still here and fine. Someone's under each one, yeah? Good, good, good.
Ouch. Think we're doing all right here. Oh, there's AoEs everywhere, and also things we need to stand in. Oh dear, and a stack marker. Oh, there's so many things. There's so many things. We managed it. Woo! That was so many at once. Oh geez, now there's this. We've almost got it. They've almost got it, come on. Finish it. That hurt a lot, but we're still gonna win. Such pervasive light, it does steal into the darkest corners and chase away my shadows. Whew. And thus the Shadow Queen doth fall. I commend you on your victory. Yes, such skill and strength are deserving of a more fitting stage. Come, mortals. The true master of the text went away. Hang on. Of shadows awaiteth you. Yes. We've made it to the final boss fight of the raid, everyone. Shall we begin? Let dominion of your precious skies be decided here and now. We fight Diabolos! All right, I think we are just about ready to begin. Everyone's coordinated and refreshed on mechanics, so we're about ready to go. By the way, you might have noted, Skaha's corpse came up along with us. That will be relevant later. But all right, we begin! You expect the creature I was before, feebled by confinement. Ha! Face me now in the fullness of my power. So I'm staying somewhat close to the boss here because they have a move which they don't really telegraph, called Ultimate Terror, which does a big donut AoE around them. You don't want to be facing Nightmare. I think someone stunned them out of doing that eyeball move. Good for them. But yes, they have a sort of untelegraphed donut AoE around them that will do a lot of damage. So you kind of want to stay near the boss when you can. But when these Death Gates get spawned in, we definitely want to kill them quick because they will spawn adds quickly. Oop. Eyeball again. Hide from that. There we go. Very good. And resume fight. Not even in eternal sleep shall you be free from the terror of my weaving. Okay. There's no avoiding this one. It's just going to hurt. Sorry, healers. And a stack marker. Yay! We live. Oh, here comes that donut. You want to be close by. Lest ye be destroyed by the donut. This tiresome battle hath dragged on over long. Enough. All right, we've reached the next phase of the fight. This is probably looking familiar. So there's various gates that are getting pulled in now. This life gate is the one we need to prioritize. It definitely needs to be destroyed. Bow before the shrieking majesty of the void. What have you done? You seek to wrest from me control of the portal. Keep destroying. Ah, oh, it keeps on getting its life back. Stop it. Stop doing that. So be it. A contest. Ow, oh, daggum it. The game crashed. Ah, good folks. They were very kind. They recognized, they saw that I had crashed and uh, made sure to not beat the boss before, uh, <laughs> before I got back. But they wanted to also make sure that we got footage of stuff. We did miss the phase transition, so now that we're back in uh, Diabolos, we're just skipping right to phase two here with Skaha Absorbed. 
Hey everyone, it's me, Dan from the future. I'm running the fight again, just so we can get footage of that little face change, then we'll be right back. This tiresome battle has dragged on over long. Enough. The energies of the Nether will be mine. I will bathe in primordial darkness. Big door. It's a life gate. We need to attack, and then we're going in. Bow before the shrieking majesty of the void. What have you done? You seek to wrest from me control of the portal? So be it. A contest of strength, then. A contest you have no hope of winning. Let's see, then these other doors come in. We gotta take out all them doors. But then... We, then we finished killing the door. But then later, things. More things. Impossible. I'm Lord of the Void. You cannot... Ah! <sighs> My imprisonment weakened me more than I imagined. But you've not bested me yet. Witness now my true purpose for seeking the Queen's rebirth. Yes, the glory, the infinite well of shadow. You've breached Skaha's unholy vessel and released her power unto me. Shadow itself shall be mine armor. Come, strike your feeble blows in vain. Another rift. Another chance to test your might. More doors. And a diabolic gate. This is what we wanted to see. Because we're going in. Then we have to go in here, and we have to fight a little shadow void beast thing before it has a chance to come out. Because it'll be much stronger when it comes out. And then... Then it's basically the rest of the fight. So, back to present me. Alright. Now we're in phase three of the fight. Diabolos has absorbed Skaha, and now we have to avoid both Diabolos' attacks and versions of Skaha's attacks as well, which are stronger. Lots to remember and pay attention to. Such defenses will be difficult to pierce, but mind not his boasts. A persistent assault will prevail. Oop. Those big markers are not good. Neither is that one. Ooh, that's scary. Okay, so this is... an interesting one here. The, the folks who got the big red circular markers were taking away some big AoE spam. That was going to hurt us a lot. I'm gonna stand in this, because I assume we need to. Yep. Yep, we definitely need to. <laughs> but that other marker, though, that other one that was a... It was a stack marker, but it also had... that uh, red danger eye on it. That meant we needed to stack next to our companion, who was about to get hit very hard, but also we needed to face away from them, because if we stacked next to them and were facing them, we'd have gotten hit by that eye thing when it went off. So there's lots to be mindful of. When can we start hurting this thing? Yep, there it is again. So, okay, stands near our companion, but face away from them. Share the damage, but do not get whatevered by it. Oop, there's those again. And also these danger puddles that I really shouldn't have been standing in. I'm okay. Also, now there's red orbs floating around that you just don't want to run into. They'll hurt. Oop, we'd probably better be standing in a bunch of these. Oop, there's a couple more out there. Has everyone gotten to one? Okay. Woof. Close. But we made it. Oh, 
What's about to happen? This looks like it's about to hurt. Don't know if I care for it. Oh, yep. Yep. That hurt all right. A lot. Jeez. Must I entreat the very specter of death to be rid of you? I care not. I'll wager all for your destruction. Whew. Ooh, fancy markers now. So these fancy markers are, uh... They will do proximity damage to whoever is marked up with them. So they need to run away from the boss. But also it's sort of a, like a proximity cone AoE thing that is going to hurt everyone in its path a lot. So they also need to like mind their positioning carefully so that not everyone else gets hurt. But we win! Hooray, everyone! That is the Dunska raid done! Fashionably done, as always. Thank you all so very much for joining me today, for fighting alongside me, for your patience, <laughs> for making the time, frankly, to join me on a raid and be willing to wait for your group, for one thing, but also being willing to wait for me going and doing all the story stuff in between. It's just... Folks are setting aside a lot of time to join me for this, and it's a lot of folks, and I really appreciate it. So thank you all very much. Fashionably done. Love all your cosplay and all of your dressing up. You've been looking very good and doing very well. But now I think it's time to wrap this story up. Let's go do that. Do not relax your guard yet, Derman. The air is still heavy with his foul presence. Already taken care of the fiend, have you? And you didn't even need that dusty old relic to do it. Be careful, Captain. Diabolos yet lurks in the shadows. Finally, have I claimed the Shadow Queen's power for mine own, yet still am I harried by you noisome weevils. I must needs quit this realm for a time, and when I have grown accustomed to my newfound might, there shall be a reckoning for your insolence. This ain't the time for napping, Furball. You still got a job to do. Here is unfinished. 
In Cesare's name, I unmake thee, Diabolos. My master's will be done. Fifteen centuries have I yearned for this power. You can't not unmake me. No. No! I should have known we were wasting our breath. The captain only heeds the siren in his heart, and damn the consequences. <sighs> I told you you'd be lost without me, didn't I? And look at you, puss, getting knocked out cold in your moment of glory. You weren't like to get another chance to honor your master's memory, and you almost missed it. But I suppose you pulled through at the last. Ah, I'll give you that much. And we're back. Good job surviving, everyone. How vexing to once again be rescued by Redbill. You better recover from those injuries so we can go back to hating each other on equal footing. I'm sure. The plan was a resounding success, though it did require some intervention on Leofert's part. I'm afraid I misjudged his commitment to our cause. Well, I think he'll live. Which is surprising considering he crashed his ship into a bloody demon. Damned fool. That he is. Spare me your concern and your lectures. You all knew I wasn't like to stay abed with such a grand adventure in the making. And I'd rather break every bone in my body than be stripped of the freedom to go where I please. Besides, all's well that ends well, huh? Diablos is dead, and we're all alive. That counts as a victory in my book. It's just a pity that it cost me the Ramil and the doing of it. I hope she rests easy on that island refuge. I'm sure. The ship will be fine. As, like, as fine as an exploded ship can be. Lifford appears to be mourning the loss of the Ramil. Ugh, my goggles are a mess. But I can always get me a new pair of goggles. And a new airship. I suppose we should be glad we didn't lose aught else after diving headlong into a void scent nest. Now that we've taken the skies back, it's time we were taking our leave. The Talons and the Red Bills can kiss this brief alliance farewell. Unless, of course, you're interested in a more permanent arrangement. Your bootlookers might think your vo voice a siren song, but it grates on me ears like a harpy screech. Now, this is the first and last time we fly together. We're back to being rivals, the way it's always been. You are a very stubborn man, Red Bill. But you do well to remember. I always get what I want in the end. Head back to me quarters and see to the fur balls hurts. I'll be along in a bit.
I feel so foolish, Dermot. I demanded that Leifert remain behind only to have him rescue my mission from certain failure. A failure that would have made mock of your heroic efforts as well. You're too kind. Ah, what words exist that can properly express my contrition? I know not how to even begin making my apologies. I should like to approach the captain, but he has the air of a man who seeks solitude. Tis strange to see him so melancholy. Could it be the loss of the Ramil which troubles him so? Nay, I shan't intrude upon his contemplation with clumsy questions and trite platitudes. Let us leave him be for the moment. I like your little feet. It's very cute. Much spindlier than the Final Fantasy VII incarnation. <sighs> Alright, let's head inside. And here we are, one more time. The captain is not his usual bombastic self. Mayhaps Stasia can enlighten us as to the source of this uncharacteristic malaise. Any ideas? Mr. Stasia, if I might ask you a question. Do you know the cause of the captain's melancholy? Is it because of the Ramil? Pray tell me if it is so. I cannot help but feel responsible for the vessel's destruction and would better understand Leoford's present distress. Hmm. If you really want to understand, I suppose I should start with how the captain was orphaned as a child. As matters turn out, he was taken in by a high-born widow who raised him as her son. From what Leifert's told me, his adoptive mother was a kind, quiet-spoken woman, but due to some illness or other, she was rarely able to venture outside. Instead, she spent hours reading to her boy from a library, well-stocked with books from faraway lands. Leifert cared for her as her malady grew worse by the day, and he was there by her side when death finally carried her away to Thal's halls. While she was alive, she never did ask much of him. Not long before she passed on, however, she wrung from him one single promise, that he escape the conformity she had always endured, and to live his life as free as a bird. As you've likely guessed, her name was Ramil. That's her portrait there, hanging on the wall. Ah, this explains much. I had wondered as to the origin of his vessel's naming. The Sky Pirate Way is the life Lifford chose for himself. But I like to think he named his ship the Ramil so that his mother would be there to watch over all of his adventures. Since when were you so loose-lipped about a comrade's private past, Stasia? Hello. I ain't in the habit of leaning on people's sympathies, so you can all keep that tidbit to yourselves, huh? And I thought I told you to see to the furball's wounds. Look at your cape, puss, it's in tatters. Come here a moment. Gotta fix the cape. A scarf? For me? Aye, that's a little present we give to every new Red Bill. Romeo taught me that it's not protecting memories that's important. It's having the strength to follow your path and to make those memories in the first place. Seeing how determined you were to clean your master's slate, I'd say you'd fit right in with our crew. Listen, if you're thinking that that little airship meant a lot to me, then you'd be right, but I'd rather mourn a hunk of metal than lose them as... I'd rather mourn a hunk of metal than lose them as can share in me highs and lows. So let's get this straight, puss. There's no need for apologies. A sky pirate makes his choice, and he sticks by it. The life of a sky pirate, hmm? As I seem to be bereft of both place and purpose now, I suppose I shall accept your offer. I am yours to command, Captain. Glad to hear it. Your first duty is to join us in giving our adventurer here a proper send-off. Well, it's about bloody time you two saw eye to eye. But honestly, Captain, you don't mean to head out in those rags, do you? Let's get you cleaned up as well before we say our fond farewells. You are a mess. All right. Looking much better. Hopefully feeling better as well. Hey, Yutada. Did you see? Ketchy is wearing Red Bill's scarf. Isn't that just wonderful? I agree. 
For fifteen centuries did I wander in the dark, alone. To be so surrounded by companions and given a new hearth to call home fills me with a warmth I had almost forgotten was possible. I'm glad you're happy. We have a spare airship the captain can use for now until he feels ready to build a new one. It's time we parted ways, Dermon. Let's give you an escort down to Coldwind. Yes, please. That was some adventure, Dermon, but our journey into the unknown is over. For the now. When the skies spit out some new mystery, you can bet I'm coming to find you. After all, there ain't nobody else who handles the unexpected quite like you do. High adventure and the heady rush of danger. Surely in this life there's no greater reward. That's a good bunch. I'm glad we've met them. But now we've responsibilities to get back to, I think. And just like that, the Shadow of Mock raid is concluded. I hope you've all enjoyed our little side story here. It was a good time. Thank you once again to all the Dantalus folk for uh, helping to make this run possible and run so smoothly. You all did great, and it was a pleasure doing that run with you. When next time we come back, next week, probably, I don't know what day of the week it is. I'm recording this pretty far in advance. When next time we come back, we will resume the main story with patch 3.2, I want to say. Yeah, 3.2, I think. And then there will be more little side story diversions later on. But thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time back in Ishgard. Do take care, all of you, and goodbye!